And now, weighing in out of the blue corner, Josh the Pong Thompson. 100% agree. And on the other mic, he weighs in from the red corner, Big John McCarthy. All right, it is the Weighing In Podcast, and it is after the UFC is over. Jake Paul versus Mike Perry is no more. That fight is over with. The whole night we have been watching fights, and look at my man. He is balding on the side of his head, but it doesn't no, matter. It's where my hat That is was. not, that is, don't, don't, don't sit there and try to say that you got your hair buzzed. No, that's I Dude, you my... got a line on your head that is showing that you either had a hair transplant mm. or you are balding like a no. bitch. Sorry, my man. Sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> we don't do that around here, man. But let's not talk about oh. me, man. Let's talk about confused <laughs> Keto George over here, my man. <laughs> what? He's got the, he's got the ginger Muslim beard with the wife beater tank top and the the biker tattoos and i mean looking good baby uh, he's sexy the armpit hair coming out i mean (laughs) george is george is fitting into a multitude of sections of the population we love him no matter what keto george we love you no matter what my man we love you my (laughs) man my man gave me a little i was a little concerned i was like man is did he is he got like powder on his body? It's just a little white there. Just... <laughs> <laughs> hey, you would you're you're you would be considered like royalty in Japan because you know they don't like to have any skin color, just like to be white. You're you're right oh, there, yeah. brother. A little little you're... sunshine will help. Man. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I have some friends that uh, were Japanese in San Jose, and they would always wear like a visor oh, or a always. shield. They'd always, always giant keep... hats. Yep. everything covering up to the yep. neck. You look and you go. Man, are you actually like afraid of the sun? It's ninety degrees. Is... Yeah, I mean, it's just kind of how they grow up. I mean, you know, I, obviously it signifies like if you are darker in color that you are more poor because you have to work outside. That's what the uh, that's originally what I've oh, was told. Here, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> John, John, <laughs> John, a little brown right. these days, right? Working I'm out all, there. I'm in all the sun. good with it, man. I'm yeah, you ever work? It. You ever work outside with your shirt off? All the time. All the time, really. All the time. God, I love to see that sexy body. Let me see that That's sexy. That's why he goes through. Yeah, I'll tell you when I when I was young. I mean, young. It was before I was married, and uh, I used to work uh, painting streets and putting in you know the parking uh, bumpers, the cement blocks, mm-hmm. right? Put the block, put the put the two spikes in, pound them in, and. I was probably about 280, 285 Jeez. pounds. I, and I didn't have any fat. I had, you know, six pack of abs and I didn't fat. have any fat. Yeah. And so I used to wear, I, I would always wear this band. I would wear a freaking headband that I would tie because keep the sweat out of my eyes <laughs> and a pair of shorts with boots. I know where this and is that, going. And that's what I worked in. <laughs> I had more girls crash their cars when I was painting the streets. Oh. And so my boss actually told me, he goes, hey. He goes, we have one more goddamn. If, if if one of these girls hits one of our trucks, you're putting your fucking shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> now that body is not the same when I'm out on the farm. Uh, it's, it's all gone. right though. It's, it's right. we've we've lived a good life, John. Uh, oh, I yeah. tell this story all the time, man. To people like I actually had some friends over tonight watching the fights, and they were like, "Hey, like, do you miss fighting?" And I was like, "No." Not at all. I said, but you know what gets a little depressing is sometimes I get out of the shower, I walk past the mirror, and I'm like. Damn, Damn, I used to be an what athlete. Happened? What, happened what happened to you? <laughs> you know, I was like, you know, hey. and when I do get those thoughts of missing fighting, then I go for a run and I'm like, yeah, I'm done, man. <laughs> There's just no way I'm getting back into that type of shape. Dude, you know, it's, you got to be honest about it and yeah. you got to look at it and go, okay, you're 45, I'm 62. And there, there comes that point, like it ain't coming back. No. But then you go, fuck it. You know what? Like Joe Rogan, fucking Dana, they're right. They're all on fucking, you know, testosterone and all this. Maybe I should do that. Then I look at the price. I go, no. Not yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you can get a prescription from what I've been told. Like, you can get it. Yeah, you can. And then I'm not sure if your insurance covers it. I would yeah, imagine I it does. I don't, I don't think, I don't think you're going to. Maybe if you could get someone to say, oh, it's a medical thing because you're uh, well, is it, is super it be, low. But... Does it have to be a certain low for you to get it? I, I don't I know. I think. I would think. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, like, don't get me wrong. Like, I've thought about like when I get to like my 55, 60 age, been about ten uh, years. I thought about I don't doing see like some anything, test boosters. Look, at, I, I don't see anything wrong with someone doing it for if it makes them feel better and yeah. they live their life better and things like that. It's not like you know, look, 
it's not like you're in the fighting and you're mm -hmm. going through uh, trying to you know take tests and pass tests while you're doing it. no that's well, I, well, Cowboy Cerrone was very vocal when he retired. He's like, man, I'm getting yeah, on doing all it. types of gear. Fuck and so I don't know yes. what he's on. I know he's on peptides because I know he's, I've seen him marketing that on his Well, uh, let's be Instagram. honest. Chael can tell you about everything because he <laughs> takes everything. <laughs> he's a walking pincushion, that guy. Oh, dude. He says he goes, you know, the best The best is, and Chael's honest about it. I love yeah. when he does you know, some of his things. And he'll sit there and he'll say, he goes, let me tell you something. When I was fighting john jones he goes i was on more shit than anyone would believe he goes i was oozing peds i was oozing steroids he goes and in my first tie up with him he just flung me like i was nothing he goes <laughs> and i knew <laughs> <laughs> just crack up oh no i'm like, like yeah, uncle Chael, like Chael, man. Chael. he's uncle always got Chael. he's always got the good one-liners man oh yeah he's you know one of the first yeah. times i ever talked with him on the phone i know he does it but i wasn't expecting him to do it just in a normal conversation he's like right when i was like all right man hey thanks and he's like click just hung up <laughs> it's oh, yeah. like that was the end of the conversation oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, his, so, his big th his big thing is you know hey are you ready? Kaboom. Yeah, it's kaboom. <laughs> Just kaboom. done. So, good stuff, man. Hey, we lost the Brad Tavares fight tonight, though. That was kind of a yes, crap situation. Did. I heard Park yeah. got hurt, huh? Park, he got sick. Oh, he got sick? I think a medical thing, yeah. I heard That's he what happens sick. when you uh, right. when you show up in Vegas, man. You get the you get, the, you get the HIV. We call it the HIV, buddy. You get the HIV. <laughs> you only get it once, though, from what I understand, unless you're Magic Johnson. That's what I've been told. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. Let's man. get the him. Oh man. But John, you know, uh before we get started, you know, this uh this show is brought to you by Bet US and just one more thing from our sponsors. Bet US, America's favorite sports book and casino. Live betting and race book. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. Bet US, where the game begins. Hey guys, we're back and guess what? If you guys had actually listened to us a little bit over the last show, you guys would have made some pretty good money on these fights. Overall, these fights were pretty damn good, John. They were pretty damn good. I, I mean, I got to be—I got to be honest. I mean, not bad. I felt like a lot of them knew they were fighting for their their career in the UFC, and some of them they, were. Yeah, and they came out though, and they put on some good fights. Like I'm not saying it was the most technical situations. No, I'm, no. Si I'm that's, simply that's, saying it, there was except some, for. Except for Verna Yenderoba's fucking yeah. armbar, which was technically beautiful. Oh, was everything she was doing. I mean, this, yeah. actually, to be honest, that, those first couple scrambles in their fights, in that fight, that really was good, pretty damn good. When she took the back yeah. and then uh, almost like kind of rolled her through. I thought both of them. This both, both of them. Phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal matchup, man. You know, um, it, there was a there was a lot to take away from these from these fights, man. To be honest, but John, let's let's talk about something else though. When it comes to the fight, the two, the main event, you have two female fighters, 38 and 37 or 37 and 36, I think is what it was. I'm not sure their exact age, but they're both in that. They're only a year apart. Mm -hmm. Are we at a stage where I guess I could say I'm kind of right? Is that female yeah. fighters get better with age? I'm going to tell you you're right. I, I, I tell <sighs> everyone. Wait, wait, how did that taste come out of your mouth? Like dude, vinegar? You know what? It's hard. <laughs> like vinegar? <laughs> it, it, it's got it's got some holes in it like your hairline. But wow. Yeah. <laughs> It's there, dude. This well, this one right here is from Tony Ferguson. That cut right well, there. Well, that you're missing it. Gives me a little cut. It's, it's up higher. John, I was wearing a hat. I was wearing. I was look wearing a that. hat. I was dude, wearing a hat. Look at that. I was wearing. Dude, a hat. You got some serious roadmaps going on. Oh wow, man, there. I haven't washed my hair in three days. So oh, you lie. It's all. Oil. I don't wash my hair. I don't wash it once a week. What? Yeah. You gotta be kidding no, me. No. What is wrong with no, you? No, it's been I've been I've been you, told by you no, I've been told by doctors bastard. that it's better not to wash your hair every day. Okay, you, and those doctors are idiots. No, they're like not. a lot of doctors. Wait a second. Okay, what These is wrong with doctors? you? What are you what are you listening to doctors? These for? aren't the C O V I D doctors. You're gonna These listen are the real to, doctors. So, so if you have a doctor say, Josh, it's not good for you to take a shower more than once a week, you're gonna listen and not take a shower. Because that's nonsense. You know that's you, how diseases. Why is spread. that nonsense? But washing your hair is Cause that's how you can get the hiv by not showering. <laughs> you gotta, you got, you gotta, you gotta get the soap on the dick right away, cause then it goes well, away. You, you gotta man. know that. Wow, that's basic that's stuff, a, John. You gotta I know, just, I, dude. All I know is uh, now I know. Now you I know. Always had that fucking damn. Do you smell that? 
Yeah. yeah. It was you. No, it was not me. It was you my hair. Stinky fuck. It was my hair. I, well, see, <laughs> once I stopped, because John, the issue was, is when I was fighting, I would, I would literally wash my hair twice, sometimes three times a day, because you did three workouts in a day. Okay. So I just got to the point where, like, my hair started like kind of like flaking and getting like broken. It got well, real, you can it got get real dry. dry scalp. Yeah, yeah, it was just I didn't get I didn't get dandruff. Like my hair literally started like breaking. When I would comb it, it would kind of break off in the. I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" It's still so I, doing it. I, you shut your whore mouth. <laughs> okay, so I went to the doctor and I was like, "Hey, what's going on? Like, something's going on." I was like, "You know, I, I honestly thought I was like this maybe is like something to do with like alopecia or like basically I had cancer. I was like thinking my hair was falling out." And he's like, "He's like, how often do you wash your hair?" Because he started looking at my hair. He's like, "Oh, everything looks good." You know, he's like, "You know," I was like, "It's just." And so he goes, uh, "How often do you wash your hair?" I said, "Probably two, three times a day." I go, "Because I work out." He's like, no, 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 no. Only wash it at night before bed. He's like, okay, then, that's once a day. Yeah, I kid that John. I said, he's like, if you now you're going if, once a week. Yeah, because I don't work out every damn day now. I'm fucking old. I got two kids. What do you want me to do, John? I don't care if you work no, out or not. John, John, so gotta, John. Okay, I got to get you on the farm because I'll no. tell you what. If you, I go on the farm, John, every night I'm going because to, you're, you're going to be farm. I'm stinking. sleeping in your nice, pretty bed, okay, over there with, with fucking yeah, pink but shit. Not without hair. taking a shower. No, you're not. Pink shit I'll fucking. I'll put you with the fucking dog. I'll go take a shower. But I will take you and put you in the doghouse. It's big it, enough for you. You can sleep soap. in there. I'm not using soap. I might even give you a blanket. I'm not using soap, John. Okay. <laughs> Dude. Bad things happen when I bend over. For this <laughs> uh, <laughs> like... At least I know where that fucking smell came from. Now. Yeah. Uh, all right, my man. All right, all right. Let's get into this fight, though. So, all guys, go ahead. Say it again, John, where we left off. I was. You were right. Thank you. I believe that women's age at a different increment than men as far as they continue to get better a little bit longer into their careers. Yeah, at a professional uh, athlete level, I believe so. Yeah. I believe so. I, I, don't know, I don't know why or what reason, or I can't give you any rhyme or reason on why it happens, but I just feel like they really come. Look, you have, you have 42, 41, 42-year-old Olympians that are setting world records. In swimming and tra all now these you're other things. Now you talking Dana Torres. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like, you have you have 41-year-old females that are actually in the Olympics making the team because they're still that damn good. I mean, they are right. struggling more so to make it out of college and when they're supposed to be in their prime, you know. Um, but, no, I, I, believe, I believe that women get better with age, um, I think. Well, a lot of women will agree with you. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> Giving them love right now, man. I think they deserve uh, well, we, it. And we're I, not only talking about their fighting skills, just to get better with it. Yes, they do. Absolutely, okay. they do. But I also look at this fight, though, and I thought what I saw from Lemos, I didn't expect that type of jiu-jitsu and that type of grappling from her at all. Uh, I didn't think that she would be willing, the willingness to go ahead and exchange any of these grappling scenarios, especially in the first round. But as the fight went on and they were just going back and forth on the ground, they looked like two ferrets in the beginning. Yeah. And uh, but it was a phenomenal grappling match. I mean, I've I've seen guys in the UFC for years, and uh, they don't grapple as good as these two females did tonight. Great job, great performance. Um, <clears throat> armbar transition was so slick, oh, so beautiful, clean, John. Just yeah, just absolutely. You're looking and saying, especially as the as the time is starting to go down in the round, mm -hmm. and you have that position. It's like a lot of time they won't give it, up, and she just swings right into it, beautifully executed, and then the way that she controlled the arm. As you see, Lemos trying to curly shuffle out of that. Nope. She brings her right back. And yeah. that's what someone that understands the positioning of the arm and how to hold that and keep it in the right place. It was beautifully done. I thought I thought Amanda Lemos was actually fighting a good fight. I thought that Yandaroba was the one controlling most of the engagements and, and she was causing more problems for Lemos. But it was a fight where e either one, you know, at any time could win the fight it made it interesting and i give it up for you know yanda roba is her stand-up is functional it still scares me when she's in the stand-up dude it really does but man when she hits the ground she's good john but here's the thing though jake shill's stand-up scared me every time yeah, he got in there absolutely but it Same was here. very functional you go back and watch yeah, his fight functional. with gsp how much damage have you seen other people commit to gsp's face the way that jake shills is damaged yeah. in his face I mean, there's only been a handful of guys that have been able to damage GSP that way on the feet. Jake Shields can go around bragging about the fact he's one of them. I know he lost, but still, he's one of the guys that beat him up. You're like, yeah. what? And Jake did it with a jab and a left body kick. You know, it was like jab, jab one, two. 
It's so bad. But Jake is so good in one area that he he did fighters are afraid that they're gonna eventually get taken down, so they don't pull the trigger. This is a that's a classic example of someone that when you're so good in one area that you can make other things work by not being that good. It's because yeah. you you can threaten them in the other directions. Great job yeah. though. Well, um, yeah. It's one of those you can take a look. I don't know. It's almost like Yandaroba being in the strawweight division, Whaley being the champion. You know, mm-hmm. maybe maybe it'll be a good fight. It seems to me that Whaley is physically strong, physically faster. Is going to be a tough you know uh, person for Yandaroba to get over on. But man, her her ground game is that good. She can catch anyone. She's damn good. I'm looking forward to seeing like where they put her now. Because what Lemos was number one, I believe. Three. Oh, no, she, she was three. three. Okay. Three against five. Yeah. So I'm interested to see how that fight all, uh, how she, where they end up trying to put her in that situation. Well, even if they, if they switch places, you know, that's fine. Okay. So Yandarova will we, we'll say is at three. I think Jan is the, is still at number one. Yeah. You know who's number so, two then? Don't know. Let me see. I don't have a sheet in front of me. Let me see here. Here we got. Here we got. Who we got. Who we got right here. <clears throat> was he, uh, 125, correct? Or was 15. This 15. Straw weight. Jeez, jeez, jeez. Come on, Josh. Get it. Come on. Get it together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. So you have Lemus at three. Tatiana <clears throat> Suarez. Suarez. Yeah. That's yeah. going to be. See, that would be a fun fight, though, too, right there with John the Roba. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Suarez and her. But I mean, I want to see Suarez get her title shot first. She deserves it. So do I. She deserves yep. it. Yeah, you know, finishing does. people, having great performances on her return back to the cage. Just good stuff. So I'm looking forward. Hopefully she doesn't have to fight anybody else. She gets the automatic title shot. Her and Whaley should be a fun fight. Be a great should fight. Should be a great fight. Uh, next fight. Steve Garcia coming out against <laughs> Sung Woo Choi. It didn't last long. And we can we we kind of called this one a little bit. We, you know, we uh, talked about it and stuff. Steve Garcia is on a roll, and he's in that position right now where he believes, mm-hmm. and he is he's one of those guys. He's going to bite down on his mouthpiece, and he's going to start tracking you down and throwing big shots and taking shots to deliver his shots because he thinks that his shots are going to have more power than your shot. And right now, he's right. Yeah, because that's exactly what he did in this fight. It was fast. It was violent, and I loved every second of it. I thought that was just beautifully done by Garcia. When you um, when you when you can rely on your chin and understand, like, hey, I felt the power already. I can just go ahead and start walking forward a little bit. Landed a nice mm-hmm. clean shot, and uh, I thought uh, Choi was just somebody that thought he could take the shots and keep coming forward, and he wasn't able to. I and mean, he took so he took a two piece and a biscuit right there. There was a couple in there. There was a couple of fights that they uh. Ooh. Just bite down and let's throw. I thought yeah, it was fantastic. Hyder fight. Hyder fight was just freaking awesome. It was awesome. But well, some of them look like I was giving, like you and I were texting each other during the fights. I said one of the fights was, gave me flashbacks of Phil Baroni and Dave Manet. Yeah, Literally, did. the punches were holding him up against the fence. And then he hit the fence and kind of stood back up again. And they got hit again, hit the fence again, and just got stood back up again. I mean, Baroni was just on target that night with like 40 punches yeah. in a row. But uh, yeah, this 40, was 40 punches in about six seconds. Yeah, it was <laughs> back, back when he had the speed, man. Yeah. He was he was explosive and fast uh, back then. <clears throat> back then. Um, but yeah, this this fight didn't last long. And uh, you and I had said it like Garcia is one of those guys that he's got to make it a grimy fight. Once I think he felt the power, once he realized like, OK, look, I can see this stuff coming. OK, a little yeah. bit more. And he was able to touch him. And, and Choi just was just caught him off guard, sat him to his ass and it was over. It yeah, was he, well, Troy, Troy made a bad decision when you're thinking about it. Look, we talk about it all the time. You have choices and you get hit with a good shot. You know, hey, move, get yeah. away from them, get, get yourself some distance, get yourself some time. That's one of your choices. Another choice is, hey, clinch, get in, grab a hold of him, hold on to him, get into that clinch so it'll give you time. You know, and the last thing is, you're going to bite down and, and plant your feet and start throwing back, and that's not what you want to do. Yeah. And that's exactly what he did, and that's why the fight ended the way it did. Next fight, John. So, <clears throat> Kurt Holabaugh taking on Kanyan Krzyzewski. I'll tell you what, this was actually a really good fight, I thought. I thought uh, I thought Kanan actually uh, fought hard, tough as hell. He took some big shots. I thought Kurt Holabaugh 
fought tough as hell. Uh, he was put into some really good submissions at times and worked his way out of them. And it was a tough fight back and forth. I thought, I thought it was, uh, Kurt Holoba who won the fight. He got the decision, but, uh, really, I mean, both guys worked their ass off in this fight. This was a damn good fight. A lot damn of back good. and forth, um, some good clinch work, some good striking from the outside, a little bit of grappling, yep. not much, but I mean, they really let, they, they really left it all in the cage. And it was a mm. good fight to see. Um, man, <clears throat> they both got rocked a little bit. They both got hurt. They oh, both yeah. came back. They both put it on each other. Some of the good, like the clinch work against the fence was nice. I mean, they did some good stuff in this fight. It was a very, very fun fight. Very evenly contested fight also. One or two shots would have changed the direction of the fight. Not according to Kurt Holobo's son. <laughs> Did he you was, hear? He was so cute, though. <laughs> he was cute, man. I loved it. I'm man. glad. Like, look, the one thing that not the one thing. There's many of things, but the UFC does a great job of um, somewhat including like family members into their storylines. And this is one of those things. Like Kurt, uh, Kurt Holmba, he f used to fight, I think, in Strike Force. Oh yeah, that's how long he's been around been around for a long time and i'm thinking to myself I'm like i was i had a rich child over tonight i was like is is that the same hollow from uh from she's like yep that's him yeah. and i was like hopefully cow man every but when you say the name kurt you know it goes through my mind kurt pellegrino but yeah. holland ball was like I, I was like man i swear i swear i know that guy i know and bridge is like yeah he used to be in strike force like, that's not the same yes it is yes yeah? it is good for him man i mean like i thought like i said look when you fight these kind of fights it really is that dig deep moment. I thought he fought a great fight um, back yeah. and forth. And like I said, any like one or two punches the other way could have changed the direction of the fight. But oh. he got the nod. Good stuff tonight. Definitely could have. I mean, you take a look at some of them where it's like it, <clears throat> there's something about Louisiana. When you look at Dustin Poirier, Kurt Holobus from Louisiana, something about Louisiana tough because he's Louisiana tough. He's just He's just a gritty uh basic but tough ass person coming at you and stuff so it was good to see him get the win he's still out there fighting but yeah he was in strike i think he fought pat healy in strike force that's the guy that uh, i remember him fighting. pat was just a big ass dude man <laughs> that was huge at the time for 155 yeah he was enormous but yeah but all right, we had Bruno Silva taking on Cody Durden this is one of those ones that we talked about with the wrestling of Cody Durden and you said, I think he's going to try to stand up. And you were right. He did yeah. try to stand up throughout this thing. And it basically was his downfall. Yeah. I mean. But he was doing well. He was doing really well. Yeah. I thought it was, I thought it was, a, I thought it was shaping up to be a really good fight, man. I thought it was it a was. good fight. And then uh, Aljo just made the mistakes, you know? And I mean, I don't know, John. It was, it was, to me, it was a good fight. It was, <clears throat> both of them have, I thought Aljo was going to keep it on the feet just thinking, because um, no, no, we're talking Cody Durden oh, versus sorry, Bruno sorry. Silva. What are you going to Algeo for? That's what I thought you Bill said. Bill Algeo did not look good. He got handed. Oh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Silva and and uh, Durden. My bad. My apologies. Yeah. <clears throat> sorry, I was looking up the card as well, trying to get it up because I can't get it up on here. Bruno um, Silva is on a roll, man. He's he's doing good. But yeah, but Durden was winning that fight. He was. He was winning that fight it. up until that moment. Yeah. You know, and just yeah. one exchange, you come up, you know, you, you dip your head a little bit too much this way or that way. And next thing you know, it's all over. If you go back to what we were talking about, that's what I said about him, though. That's the whole thing with him. He's just, he's wild. And all of a sudden, he'll take a chance and you go, what did you do that for? Yeah. But that's kind of what makes him who he is. So. Yeah, but you got to think about it, though, John. Like, if you're the small, if you're the taller fighter, you should never be getting knocked out with an uppercut. I mean, he got hit with the uppercut. I think I hit with another shot and put him down. But I'm simply saying, like, yeah. you shouldn't be getting hit clean like that with the uppercut. And uh, that's what happened. So, I don't know, John. I don't but know. But many times when you're the wrestler, you're going to be dipping down. Yeah, but, I mean, you got to get I – guess, I guess for me, right, I always went to the body lock. There was less chances of getting knee in the face or uppercut. And the yeah. one time I didn't, like, go to the body lock, you know, I got uppercut and knocked out. <laughs> but I'm tricky. So, it is what – you know what I mean? Like, it's just – Dip into the body and get into the body lock and then work it from the leg. Working your way down to the leg can be can be done from there as well. Yeah. Uh, what, I mean, overall, yes. I thought Silva, you know, he's trying to bring the action in the first round and wasn't having success and then was able to, to ha you know, wasn't having success in the next round either and then started going ahead and, and rounded it up and hit the beautiful shot and got it down. So yeah. nice work. Yeah. Next fight. 
All right, this is your Bill Algio versus Duho Choi. Uh, I, I was, I mean, Duho Choi is a you know a guy that we've seen for a long time. He hasn't fought a lot, mm-hmm. but you had that extraordinary fight with uh, Cub Swanson that the UFC put in their Hall of Fame, and they should have. It was a fantastic fight. I was there, you know, for it and stuff, and I was uh, at the time that it happened. I went. I think. Well, I think I just saw fight of the year, hmm. and. I think it was, but Duho Choi is a guy that, you know, just didn't fight that often. And, and going into this, you looked and you said, well, Bill Algeo fights all the time. I'll tell you what, I was shocked at how well everything Choi did mm-hmm. worked, worked every bit. And he normally doesn't do submissions and he was going after submissions and he was putting Bill Algeo, who's a good grappler. He was putting him in trouble. Bill was, you know, working his way through a lot of them, but it it always created a problem for him. And he was taking big shots. And, the, and the, you know, a lot of people, I, I saw people online saying something about, oh, man, he just fell down. No, he got cracked with something that made it so he couldn't see out of his eye, mm-hmm. you know. And that was the end of the fight. That That's what happens. It just wasn't his night compared to, it was Choi's night. Yeah, he got he got hit with a beautiful left hook earlier in the round, and then got hit again in the same eye. I mean, yep. obviously, when something like that happens, and a fighter just kind of puts his back to the fence and like grabs his face, the first thing that goes through my mind is a broken orbital. First yep. thing is that something in there. They just look. Fighters know, like, okay, it's just pain. Okay, it's just a yep. cut. It just hurts a little bit. But then we also know because we know our bodies so well. No, that shit's broken. Like yeah. something's and wrong. They, and they also know. When they open their eyes, and I can't see. Yeah, they'll open it, and there'll be five of them. There'll be yep. five opponents. And you're like, okay, hit the one in the middle. Can't do it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's, it really does come down to that, though, because there's, I mean, I've never had a broken normal, but I've had friends tell me, like, I went from fighting, and all of a sudden I got hit. I just knew something was wrong. I just felt something in my eye. I felt like it was almost drooping. And yep. then also, too, it just feels like it feels like, and but it's I'm some seeing, people immediately get vertigo from yeah, it. Yeah, they're like, I'm seeing three, they, four people. They all of a sudden start to feel dizzy and stuff. So, yeah. I mean, I've known guys that have had, like, Josh Koscheck had a broken orbital in the GSP fight. Oh, yeah. Never fought the oh, same no. after that. That was one thing, too, is he just, you could just tell he didn't like getting hit in the eye. I don't know. I, I, I guess they did a surgery on him where they put like a metal plate or something below his eye. Yeah. Because the fracture, I guess, was a pretty decent size. I mean, and so that kind of just affected, I think, the way he fought. I think the fear, too, of you could go blind or you Happening could again. Yeah, you could have problems with your, you know, your eye for the rest of your life. That's scary, man. I have to wear glasses now pretty much like all the time if I want to read my phone. And, John, it drives me absolutely crazy. I freaking hate wearing glasses. I hate Why? it. Why? I just, it's Why? so, it's just like you always got to make sure you have them with you and and I don't want to be that. I don't want to be that old guy that like hangs him from his neck. You know how you kind of hang. You him need from your neck? you. You need the I little do. cord, dude. You I know. I cord. do. I do. And, and I just either I, that or you get the ones that have the band and they break in the front with a magnet. Yeah, that looks and totally. You just take lame. them and you boom, put your right. You'd look fantastic. Yeah, yeah. We, it would match up perfect with your bald spots. Can we start calling things gay now? Because that that's. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, why, it's lame. I, why? Why does it have to be gay? It's just lame. It's just lame. <laughs> it just reminds me. I, I literally have seen a. T- I, I would say I've seen those glasses here in Texas way more than I've seen them in California. But I just I've seen them a lot lately around here, and I'm like, really, really, is that what we're doing? Well, it's funny because a good friend of mine is a boxing referee, Jack Reese. He's he's wears those things all the yeah. time. And I'm always making fun of him. I said, dude, I think you it's realize how old you are having to wear those things with your little clicky? He goes, these are fantastic. And as soon as you, know, you get it in your mind, that hey, this is a good thing, you know, it's over. It's over. The coolness is over. It's gone. I think it's great. I remember, um, I don't know, probably about five years ago, maybe 10 years ago. No, actually 10 years. It just seems like five years ago because my brain doesn't work like that anymore. <laughs> it's when they used to have these little like slips that they would put behind the glasses. That were like shades. They they were like it what? Was like, yeah. So it was like slips. yeah, like a little like a, you know how you when you go to get your Are you eyes talking about like a little sunglass. Yeah, thing like a little sunglass on? slip that would go oh behind your glasses. That's, that's horrible. It was so bad. What are that's you saying, horrible. man? My grandmother used to wear those. Don't I'm sure she did. Don't be disrespectful. I'm sure she did. <laughs> Better put some respect on my grandma's name, man. <laughs> My, well, my father-in-law lives on the farm here, and he'll actually wear glasses with sunglasses over the top of those. Oh, I go, geez. 
Yeah, that's you shouldn't do that. Well, you remember the ones that back in the eighties? I think it was like the early nineties. The ones that flipped up and flipped down. The front part oh, yeah. was glass. Like you yeah, could. Yeah. There was a, there was a there was a a TV series that the one of the main characters he had it, and I was like, man, well, those baseball like, used baseball players used to have they fucking oh, beat, they? they flip them down, man. Oh yeah, I'm trying to catch the ball, Ooh, flip, it. flip anyway, them up. Yeah. That's dumb. <laughs> that's dumb. <laughs> uh, all, right. all right, all right. We had Hyder. Emil from the from the Bay Area, let's say, going up against Jong Yong Lee. I'll tell you what, Hyder went out there, and this is one of those fun fights where these guys both decided, oh, all right, we're going to see who is uh, the tougher individual. They just started swinging lefts and right. Yep. Hyder threw what thirty eight punches that landed, and it happened fast, and it was fun to watch for as long as it was about a minute in time, and entertaining as hell but a great win for him still undefeated and he beat he actually beat a very good fighter mm. i'm not saying that i think either guy fought real smart but i like the way they fought <laughs> john the 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 fighters that fight the smartest and the ones that have the best technique those are the boringest fights to watch could be and what we got tonight was and i i yeah. said this uh in the midweek show Flabber knocker this was a card that i felt like when i started looking up the fighters and going hey how do you fight and how do you fight? Right. Either it was going to be a total goose egg <clears throat> where they decided not to engage because they knew that the other person was going to bring the dog out of them, you yep. know, and so that or it was going to end up being just good fights, action packed fights. I thought we saw that tonight. <clears throat> like I said, it wasn't the most named, you know, no, uh, there was, was not name heavy. fight card. It was not that it was. A it was guy. definitely Korea. Yes, South it, Korea. It was. Yeah, yeah. it was. Every but, time um, I was like, wow, no, no. And you get you got to figure that Park got pulled off the cart. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, that was supposed to be. I thought I thought that was going to be the best fight of the night. I thought it was because Park was going to take a lot of damage and probably eventually either get uh, Tavares or Tavares was going to knock him out. Yep. So that was going to be another fight. <clears throat> um, okay, so then you have uh, Lee versus Emil, and then Emil like it just it gave me that like I said the flashbacks of the Phil Baroni, Dave Manet. You know what other one it kind of reminded me of except. He didn't take all the shots directly on the chin like Lee did. Okay, it was uh, Tito Ortiz and Chuck Liddell. I want to say it was their sec. Was that really? their first fight? I would say that the, the, if I was going to pick, I thought the Hyder fight actually reminded me, even though they didn't grab the the single collar tie, reminded me of Don Fry and Takayama. Ah. Standing there. Just... <laughs> yeah, but that was more like 50 50 back and forth. One was getting hit, the other one was getting hit back. This one, Lee was just getting his face punched in. Oh, yeah. He the was. I mean, he landed a couple decent shots, but then once. Yeah, a, but not enough. Once a mill touched him <laughs> with some clean shots, it was it was just him backpedaling. Yeah. And it's funny, I was having this conversation um, with some people that were in my house when the fights are going on. I said, you know, the thing is, the Korean fires are very damn good offensively. But, John, have you not noticed since Korean Zombie, they don't move their head offline and they're not defensive fighters at all. So no. I, I, and I don't know if it's just trickled down from Korean Zombie and they're just like, yeah, I want to fight like that. Just take them I, on the chin. I actually think it is because if you watch exactly what they do is they're all doing what we talk, bite down mm -hmm. and plant my feet and let's go and throw hard. And, you know, you, you can take a look at a couple of the fights tonight. It didn't end well for him because of it. Hmm. Interesting. I, isn't isn't Taekwondo uh, the birthplace of Taekwondo? I think is in Korea. Yeah, Korea. Yeah. So how come none of them kick very well? <laughs> I can't tell you. I think because a lot of them didn't take Taekwondo. <laughs> Man, like I some kids they skipped Taekwondo, went right to MMA. They went right to MMA. Beautiful. Chin in Beautiful. the air. They you can tell that they got power. Like, oh, yeah. because when they hit guys, like they, these guys, they take a step back or two. And then these, you know, they're not afraid to just, like you said, bite down on the mouthpiece and get after it. No. But man, defensively, do it. they have no defense. And and I say they, because we saw tonight, even the ones that won, they had no, no defense. There was multiples. Yeah. No I mean, not about it. They got to, they got to, I, I mean, them and Mike Perry both need to work on their defense. Oh, yeah. You know, we'll talk about that one. But. <laughs> You know, George is like, yeah. Put your hands <laughs> he puts up. his hand on his head like, oh, man. Too soon, huh? Too soon, George? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. It, like, I thought uh, Lee took some big shots, man. Emil looked good, though. He looked good. 
And he's he's he from did. the scrap pack, man. He's from the yeah. Nate Diaz, uh, Nick Diaz, well. but he's from Gilbert Melendez's gym. I want to say his whole career has been out of Gilbert Melendez's gym. So a lot of his growth has come because of Gilbert and uh, and Gilbert's wife. So good stuff, man. Great stuff by him. Yeah. A good job. He's undefeated, nine and zero. Ten and zero. Good on him. Ten and zero now. All yeah. right, next fight. Cody Gibson taking on Brian Kelleher. This is what Cody looked way. I think they said in the thing he did look way bigger than Brian, mm-hmm. and he just kind of just pushed his way around. It seemed like Brian was always trying to come back. He had his moments to be offensive. He tried for some submission stuff. Nothing that was going to catch Cody, and finally Cody catches him in the arm triangle, and you could tell it was tight. It wasn't going to be long before it was over. And John, how much more? How much happens. more did you think Cody Gibson weighed than Brian Kelleher? Ten pounds? Yeah. 10 okay. To Twelve. Okay. How much of a difference do you think it makes that Jake Paul weighed thirty to thirty-five pounds more than Mike Perry? Well, and well, I don't make excuses. In, it, no, in punching power, I think it, it helped him. And in, in cardiovascular, he was sucking some air because he was trying to throw so hard. So, you know, it, it makes look weight makes a difference. It, it makes does. a difference in makes a difference in how much damage you can take. Mm-hmm. You know, That's and this is said. it. It's well, it's it's the truth. Look, it, it, it's a matter of it's no different than anything else. If you have weight, it can absorb more damage you know a 155 pound person cannot absorb the amount of damage that a 250 pound person can it just you also you get hit you know everyone can get hit and hurt and knocked out but it's going to happen faster to the lighter person usually than it does to the heavier person Mm -hmm. because it takes more torque and and force to make that big body move but you know there's there's reasons why Jake Paul was moving up. He was gonna fight Mike Tyson. <laughs> I don't blame him for moving up in size. I mean, I what I saw tonight though, John, was someone that I I don't even give him. I don't give him a chance against Mike Tyson. I yeah. don't give him. I give him a chance. I don't know. I can't because like, let's not even get into that. We'll talk about that fight later. But yeah. Brian Kelleher okay, though, perfect. Cody Gibson. When you look at Cody Gibson, who does he remind you of? When you look at his baby face, he reminds me of Darren Till. He really? looks almost like, can, uh, yeah, if yeah, you look bit. at his face, he looks almost exactly like a young Darren Till. Just that <laughs> baby face assassin kind of thing. And, you know, good striking, you know. He obviously grapples a lot better than Darren very Till. Very good grappling. Yeah. yeah, very good grappling. A lot better than Darren Till. Yes. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I thought I thought uh, Cody Gibson was all over Brian Kelleher. Brian Kelleher had no no chance in this fight. It went from the get. No. It Cody Gibson looks so calm and relaxed out there. Also, too, like I know that the Bulls don't have a ton of experience. What Brian Kelleher's got twenty four and fifteen, and Cody Gibson's yep. twenty and ten. But I mean, I saw a fighter out of Cody Gibson tonight. It seemed like he should have a better record than what he has. I mean, he looked good. We got to figure he went into the UFC when he was young. Yeah, and he lost. He lost quite a few fights right away, and then they you know, got rid of him, and then he made his way back on the Ultimate Fighter show yeah. and things like that. But he's a good fighter. It's just, you know, styles make fights. This fight, you know, you know, Brian Kelleher is known as a, a guy who, you know, he's got a good ground game. Mm-hmm. He'll stand, but he wants to get the fight to the ground and use submissions and stuff. Cody's every bit the submission guy yeah. that Brian is. And so not not a good matchup stylistically for Brian, but got it. Just, it is what it is. Next fight. Mir- Miranda Maverick taking on Dion Barbosa. Miranda Ma- Maverick just... Use the ground, fought smart, listened to her coach and Elliot Marshall as far as, you know, making, you know, movements inside the cage and, you know, unanimous decision victory. She deserved it. She, uh, she's, she's growing as a fighter. You can see because she's listening. Yeah. It's the fact that she's listening to Elliot and doing things inside the cage. He's almost doing the remote control. He's saying it. And then all of a sudden she's popping into it Mm -hmm. and you look and you go, you're starting to become, you know, smarter as far as your abilities in the cage and what you can do and how to do it. And you're more relaxed yeah. and she's just becoming a better fighter. <clears throat> well, um, Chris Cyborg was there cornering Barboza tonight. And I would have, I, I don't know when you, you know, when champions like a Chris Cyborg or any champion decides to go with someone who's a younger up and coming fighter, you know, they have a lot of belief in them. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to go and corner someone that I don't really believe in. 
I mean, <clears throat> I've been a pretty good, uh, um, I've been a pretty good judge of uh, work ethic, I guess I could judge say. Judge of talent. Fight. Yeah, of talent. Judge I think. of talent. You know, there's been a lot of fighters that I've, you know, from Rumble to Trevor Prangley to Habib that I've cornered and worked with. I mean, I'm going to take all the credit for Habib, of course. You know? <laughs> no. I mean, look, I was I was a punchy bag, too, not just helping him, not just cornering him when I when I, when I I was younger. No, but you, 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 you cornered people that you believe put in the work to be successful. You have to. You have like if you want if you want them to feel like there's um that they can be successful, the best thing you can do for a young fighter is support them. Whether you're cornering them or like be there, walk in the back before their fights and let them know, you know, that hey, this is all the work you've put in. This is there's growth there. I'm here to watch you fight because I'm I I see success in your future as long as you keep doing what you're doing. The ones that didn't put in the work, I never went to their fights. Uh, you know, and and if I couldn't Cause, go to their cause you, fights because you don't respect what they do, yeah, I'm like, well, like you come in only on sparring days. You don't really care to learn the grappling portion of it. You haven't wrestled at all. So if this fight goes to the ground, you're gonna lose, and you know, like those type of things, right? Um, but it, it's it's good to see. It's good to give positive feedback or give them show them the respect they deserve to the ones that came in and put in the work. You know, and it, it showed. I think for a lot of the fighters that that I was able to corner or work with and train with and spar with, whatever it is. I mean, I was speaking highly of Umar Namagamedov before anyone, everyone was, I was like, dude, this kid's 20 years old, training 19, 20 years old, training AK already. And just a sponge, not only a sponge, but just somebody that is constantly like just going, going being aggressive and just letting it all hang out. Those are the fighters that you're like, okay, look, this kid, he, he's, he's taking this serious. You want to be supportive, and now look at him, man. He's fighting what the number two or number three guy right now in the world. What next week? When what? Yeah, two next, weeks? Yeah, two, two weeks. weeks. Next week or two weeks? Yeah. Yep. So good on him, man. Good on him. Next fight. Trevor Ogden taking on Luke Razabov. It's a uh, Razabov man. He's he's known as the Tajikin tank, and he is. He's got zero body fat on him. He's strong as hell. But Trey Ogden just absolutely fought a tough fight. Beautiful job in the first round. Second round, he took a lot of abuse on the feet. Finally, he was able to get the fight, you know, to where he could control uh, what was going on. Did it again in the third round and uh, ends up getting the decision victory. I really got to give it to Trey Ogden because his last two fights, I want to say it's his last two, this fight and um, goddamn, who was it he fought? I can't remember. But his last two fights, maybe it was Kurt Holaba. Might have been Kurt Holaba. Yeah, George is saying, yeah, yep, it was Kurt. George, yeah, okay. I mean, he shows that, man, he is able to take people down. And when he gets them down, he's got a hell of a ground game. And I was really surprised with Kurt, the way he was able to control Kurt and just do what he wanted. He got mount multiple times against Kurt, and I go, you do that against Holaba, who's he's damn good on the ground. You, you're proving you are something there. So he's really got uh, he's got a lot of talent. He's a tough dude. You know, he doesn't have the greatest stand up in the world, but man, I'll tell you what, he utilizes what he has. He's 34, 35 years of age. You know, so it's like, you know, does he have a run out of the title? Man, I probably not. But I'll tell you what, he's an entertaining fighter, and I enjoy watching him just based upon how good he is on the ground. How did you, did you have it scored that way for him? Yeah, only because he, and it was tough because you take a look. The first round, he you know absolutely wins that round. Yeah. Second round, you know, I had I even though he got the fight to the ground, I gave it to uh, Razbanov, Razbanov, and then the third round, he ended up being on top. You can take a look at at the end. Loic got up there and got on top. He got. I do. I do like the uh, flying push off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was. It reminded me of you, Frankie Edgar. He was spring back. Yeah, right. <laughs> All the way in the air. Cat like but, reflexes. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, not enough out of um, Loic to get the, the the round. He was you know too much where he was underneath and not being able to do any offensive. So got yeah, it. I had it that way. John, any other fights on here you want to chat about? No, we're good. No, no. I thought the big guy did a good job. Thomas Peterson, I think is his name. I thought yeah. I thought he did a good job. Look, at, no, he needs more output and he needs to be a little more aggressive. But when you're dealing with someone like uh, 
Usman. Usman. Yeah, you got to be cautious of the power because one shot could change the whole outcome, especially with any heavyweight, yeah. not just with Usman, but with any heavyweight, you know? So, but I thought he fought a good fight. He need to get that win back on track, doing his thing. So, good for uh, Thomas Peterson, man. Good for him. Uh, all right, hey man, uh, that's gonna wrap up our UFC talk. And I want to thank our sponsors, Element. If you guys haven't tried Element, go ahead and check them out. There's a link down below. Anytime you use our our link and you purchase th- uh, anything through them, especially the mixtures, they will send you something free, like a little bonus pack of whatever their newest product is that they're putting out. Um, they have the watermelon now and they've, they've got some good, um, some good flavors that are coming out. So I'll go ahead and check them out. Use that link down below. So you get a little extra free content or free content, free uh, product with your purchase, man. I want to thank you guys for always supporting us. And, uh, element is a fantastic thing for everyone. So if add, uh, add a little bit of salt to your diet. It's not a bad thing, especially during the summer. If you are active and outside, like big John is working on the farm, feeding the pigs, feeding the goats, feeding the cows. And uh, watching his bull get laid. Great stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be admit, Sometimes. man, I'm a little jealous. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> I'm a little jealous. All right, let's go ahead and let's jump right into the Jake Paul and Mike Perry fight. Man, Jake Paul versus Mike Perry. Where you, I mean, you what, take a what? look at it. It's, a, it's one of those, look, Mike Perry went out there. And in the beginning, I'm, I'm sitting there watching a guy hands down stalking and kind of bouncing as he's doing. He's off balance and he, he gets put on it, put on his butt. He wasn't hurt from that first one though. No, but he did take some big shots throughout the fight and he ate a lot of them well, but kept getting, uh, put down in the second round. He got put down and it was a matter of first off, it looked like he was, as you know, we talked about pushing his punches. Mm-hmm. He wasn't able to truly throw a good punch. The big difference is take a look at one one simple punch, a jab. Jake Paul went to the jab how often and utilized it well. Went to the body with it, went to the head with it. He controlled distance with it, and that's what a jab will do for you in boxing. Mm -hmm. Mike Perry had no jab. Mike Perry was throwing big shots to try to put you know, Jake Paul out and he wasn't able to land the ones he, he landed a couple times. He heard him actually, you know, he, see, he got his attention, but not enough output, uh, too much as far as, I don't want to say too much as stalking and being the tough guy, but you're taking too much damage while you're doing it. Yeah. You've got to, you got to move, you know, your head offline. You got to get out of there. And he did at times, but then he took big shots from it with his hands down. There's a reason why we tell you to put your hands hands up, chin down. And uh, it's because if you don't, you can end up getting hurt. And he got hurt multiple times. And, you know, when the referee tells him to step to the side and he stumbles, you know it's over. Yeah. Look, I, I, I don't want to take anything away from Jake in terms of this. He is getting better fight by fight as a boxer. I don't yeah. want to take anything away from him. But I also tweeted this. I said... Which is at the real punk. If you guys he want to should have won this fight. He though. should we have won this fight. It. We know that. But John, yeah, I don't want to get. How long are we going to pretend as if like we're watching somebody who is fighting equal opponents? No, once again, it's not that way. It's and that's the. Like, how long are we going to feed into this? Like you're going to have to fight. And the one fighter he did fight that I would consider a potential equal opponent was Tommy, Tommy Fury. Fury. And Tommy so, was his and height, his sight, his height, his height, and his weight. And his age. Yeah. Yeah. So those are all things that were very similar. And he lost. Yeah. You know, and he did better than I thought, to be honest, against Tommy Fury. He did better than I thought. Um, but he still lost. So that's the one fighter that we can put up there and be like, hey, this is the one guy that he fought that it was his age, his kind of his height and his weight. I think Tommy Fury is a little bit taller than him. You know, but they're in the same, they're fighting the same division. And then we were talking about the Brian Kelleher fight tonight where he was probably five or eight pounds lighter than his opponent. And no, and we're going to, we're going to talk. We, we talked about, we brought that up, but n- no one seems to be bringing up the fact that Jake Paul is fighting people that are always older, smaller, you know, well, um, you got to look and say what Jake Paul weighed in at what, what was it? 200, 100, 198, something mm-hmm. like that. Right. He's cutting to get to that. Yeah. Why Mike Perry is doing the old Frank Shamrock and sticking rolls of quarters in his pockets to weigh the 196. 
you know. But don't we remember, right, with the Frank Shamrock and Tito Ortiz? Because at the time with MMA being at the level it was, Frank had to put quarters in his pocket because if you're yeah. a 20-pound difference, they don't allow the fight to happen. Is that correct? Was it a 20-pound difference? No, it wasn't a 20-pound okay. difference, but he had, he had to make, you got to figure at the time it was 200 pounds. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so he we had a level of, that's 200-pound, he had to be close to the 200-pound for, the, for them to allow him to be. And so... It, that was the, he was weighing somewhere in the 185 pound range you know yeah tito was cutting a ton to get to 200 yeah you know but uh, i guess i guess what i want to call on is you had media working the show that was in the in, you know cage side and in their inside the ring doing interviews you had media working the show when are we going to start when is this same type of media and media that works in the mma world as well as the boxing world when are we going to start calling this out? Like, hey, you've had your tune-up fights whoa, 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 and your warm-up you, fights. You, hold on, when is that media going to call out their payday? <laughs> well, John, I'm, Come on, I'm, man. No, no, I'm, I'm, here, I'm here for a conversation. I'm asking you. you crack me up. But when are we going to get to a point where it's like, hey, we need to start actually putting a little bit of pressure on this fighter and the organizations that are putting these fights on and saying, hey, let's start getting him some, whoa, some competition. I thought Mike Perry fought a way better fight. Then I then we were giving him then, then I think people thought I mean he took a lot of damage but he kept coming forward he well, kept trying he, if there was something you knew that Mike Perry was going to do he was going to take shots and he was going to come after him you know look if there's one thing that we've learned about Mike Perry Mike Perry has got the dog in him there's no he doesn't back down you know that's that's good at times and it's bad at times and you know in this situation when you're talking about boxing is different than bare knuckle boxing absolutely you know and boxing is more of a skill set that takes someone that understands when to slow things down when to back off all those things it's just part of it's a it's a different skill set and mike doesn't have really that mindset mike's got that you know he's got a forward gear but the dog in him you can't doubt no but he was not made to to go out and box with 10 ounce mm -hmm. gloves that's not who he is yeah he definitely not made for that definitely not yeah. i mean it just comes down to like look bare knuckle the hands slip through uh you can also dip your head a little bit so you hit the crown of the head which hurts the the hand more so than the head there's just yep. different ways of fighting there's a they're completely different fights they're not even the same yeah. so yeah. um definitely a different style of fight i mean like the overhand right is less effective in bo in bare knuckle than it is in in uh in boxing sure. i mean yeah. there's, it's just not as easy to land the overhand right in bare knuckle because you could hit the top of the head and really hurt your hand more so hurt than hurting your, your opponent so you've got to be a little bit more accurate to hit the face and even sometimes to the majority of the time to the body in the bare knuckle in boxing um there's just more ways to cover up there's more cushion to hit, not just the opponent's glove, but your glove as well. You've got to thread the needle between the gloves well, and around the gloves. Yeah, you, you're so right about that, unless you're Mike and you just don't put your yeah, gloves up. this is true. <laughs> so I was like, but, you know, hey, that's part of who he is. It's okay. I still love him. I think Absolutely. he's great and bare knuckle. And I hope you got a great pay, payday for this. Yeah, but I want to get back to when are we going to start having media, though, John, that calls this out and says, hey, look, we look, I've, I've been I'm kind of I've been kind of a, um, attracted to this Jake Paul boxing like trial kind of thing, because a lot of MMA guys have been stepping up to fight him and they've come up short, you know, and I'm OK with that. Look, look, I'm not, I'm under no illusion. Look, Anderson Silva, 47, 48 fighting him, 50. you know, whatever. No, when they fought, they were he was 47, 48, I believe. Right. I think he was 50. Yeah, I'll have to check on that. Uh, but let's just, let's, let, okay, let's go in the middle. Let's say he was 40, 47. 47 to 50, let's go in the middle, 48. Okay, I was right, see? So <laughs> let's, but like you have that, then you got T. Wood, who's mainly a wrestler. He's good some boxing, had a couple knockouts in MMA. You know, Ben Askren, straight wrestling, never, I don't think he ever had a knockout finish in his life. You know, but there was, you know, I'm just saying, the trial period of the warm up rounds and the level of competition you're fighting and then outweighing your opponents. I did. It was kind of nice and refreshing to hear Ariel say when I see them in the, in the ring together that he, Jake Paul looks a lot bigger. I'm glad finally somebody's saying these things 
you know, that would be nice. But let's let's start putting a little bit more buzz out there about like, hey, the the the, the fun time is over now. You fought seven, eight fights or whatever it is now of guys that are older, smaller, and you know, well, you need to figure this out. Hold on. I'm just being honest. Jake Paul is his own promoter. Yeah. It's his company. So Jake Paul can continue to do whatever he wants yeah, for true. as long as he wants, as long as people are paying. You had, what, 17,000, 18,000 people in that arena, right? I don't know how many on pay-per-view paid for it, but let's say 20,000, okay? You know, I'm not sure that that's the number, but I don't think it's going to be a huge amount. But he's able to say, make profits off of what he's doing, and he continue to do it. He'll continue to do it again. What is the – when you look and, you, you know, if you were in his position – what good does it do for you to take on a truly good boxer? Is it for your own ego? I guess I, I guess for him, right? Like for him, simply s repeating him. I'm just quoting what he's I want to be considered a true boxer and a real boxer. And this, well, when is that going to okay. come though? Because right now, it's not that. Like Am I getting that? I look, and I've said I, I started off this conversation by saying I have I enjoy seeing the growth of him inside the ring. He he it looks like he's put in the work. He is getting better every time we see him in there. Yeah. But when do we get past the the hundred? You know the the forty fights like Mexican style where they have forty fights against O oh, and fifty people. Right. Well, That's kind of where we're at right now with him. Is okay. Look, yeah, we're we're we're, the, we're past the but, the gimmick stage but hold now. On. You got you got to admit, you know, you could take a look at boxing for years, decades, mm -hmm. the whole twenty and zero, and and just setting guys up with, you know, fresh kill, you know, through their first mm -hmm. fifteen to seventeen to twenty fights, and then finally putting someone that's in front of them. You know, putting someone in front of them that, that has a skill set that could possibly beat them. You know, that, that's been the rule of thumb and how the, you know, boxing promoters have done it. He's the boxing promoter. Why is he going to put someone in front of him that, you know, has a chance of truly beating him? I don't know. I thought he wanted to be considered a real boxer. That's what I, well, I mean, you can't. He, he, he can sit there and say he's a real boxer because he's boxing. He's got a true professional record yeah he, he can go to box rec right now look up his name and it'll come up with all of his fights and all i'm saying is i totally understand what you're saying mm -hmm. but if you're jake this is one of those ones no different than you know when i tell people you know why are you listening to social media you know don't ever listen to that crap why should he listen to anybody else he's making money mm -hmm. he's winning fights it's working for him I, I guess when I look at Jake Paul, he's someone who's driven by what the public says about him. Okay. Yeah. And if the media starts to say, Hey, this, this gimmick stage now is over or the, the warm up to your pro career should start kind of closing out. And now we should start seeing you fight, you know, some athletes that are, I'm not saying top tier, but not, I'm not trying to throw you in with the best boxers in the world right now. I'm simply saying, let's try and get you. I, look, I understand if he wants to take the Mike Tyson fight first, how about it? That's a huge money maker for him. We may yep. never see him again after that because he may make so much damn money. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I I'm not knocking it's him true. for that. I mean, like, look, no. I'm against, the, you know, you fighting a 58-year-old uh, or 59-year-old. So am I. I'm against it, especially someone like a Mike Tyson's, you know, um, just that legend status, you know, in terms yep. of the boxing world. It just really that, is. That's, it, it doesn't that's sit my well problem with, with it. Disrespectful. That's my problem with it. It's yeah. disrespectful to who Mike Tyson is and what he did yeah. throughout his career. And that bothers me. It does. It bothers me as well. It really does bother me. But look, let's. I'm going to go ahead and get past that because I'm like, look, Mike's obviously he wants that fight too. No different than how Mike Perry tonight. Yeah, you know that. why. Yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> and money And I don't involved. blame him. A lot of money Hell yeah. Yeah, he's showing me yes. the money. Keto George knows what's up, man. Show me the money. So I, I'm to that point though where – I feel like there needs to be um, some accountability. I think the media could help put a little bit of pressure on that. Now, I think that once the Mike Tyson fight is over, we should start seeing 
the media start coming going, hey, who is somebody in the lower rankings in the boxing world that we could have you potentially fight? Give me a name. Give me someone in the lower rankings. You're 230. Are we going to see you fight someone at least in, in one weight class below you and not four? I mean, are you like, can we get somewhere in there? You know, um, I, I'm just looking for that opponent. I'm like, he's 230. He's just a heavyweight. Yeah, boxer. I know. I know. But can I get somebody that's one or two weight classes below you then that's that can box? You know, that is basically their main job is to box. Can we well, do I that? say it's time. Let's pull, let's pull out Deontay Wilder. No, nah, John, I wouldn't do that to him. That's fucked up. Yeah, why? What was I, you know who about? I would go with? Those I would go with maybe like uh, was it? Is it uh, Ruiz? He's lost. He's lost a lot of weight. He's down to like two twenty, I think. John Ruiz? No, no, no. Uh, oh, Andy Ruiz. Andy Ruiz. Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, Andy Ruiz. He's lost a lot of weight. He's lost a lot first, of weight. I want first. Off, first off, Jake Paul won't touch Andy. You just yeah. said Wilder. He shouldn't fight him either, John. Like, hold, that's... On. hold on. Hold on. At least Wilder's on a losing streak. Yeah, yeah, but still. Okay. And he's not on a losing streak. I uh, Yeah, I get what you're saying, but I mean, like, the size. I'm trying to get the... Deontay back on a win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're trying to get Jake Paul killed. And, and they both have big right hands, right? So it's yeah. the right hand battle. You're just trying to get Jake Paul like killed. It. I'm not trying to get him killed, man. I just want to see him, to get fight him killed. I don't want his mom to cry. Give me a level. Give me give me somebody in that level. Who's somebody in that level? We'll have to look. I'll have to do some research. Come up with I'm gonna come up with the five opponents that he could potentially face. Well, you know, somebody. Give me somebody. Come on. Anyways, <laughs> I just I, I feel like once we get past the Mike Tyson fight, we've got to start saying to, to basically like, hey, we can't keep validating that you're doing something special. When really what you're doing is you're beating up older, you know, um, slower and just, you know, and, and just people that are out of their prime, completely out of your prime. So I just, and sm smaller, by the smaller. way, a lot smaller. And so yeah. those are the things that are very important. I think as you get into the, you get past fights, eight, nine and 10, whatever it is, like, let's start, let's start matching you up. You say you want to be considered, you know, a true boxer. Well, I can't consider you one right now, what you're doing. I can't consider that. Sure, you've got a pro record. Sure, you've got a winning pro record. But the one time we ask you to validify what, you do, what you've been doing in boxing, you lost. You lost to Tommy Fury. The one time you had a chance to prove to everyone you were a true boxer, and you lost. So I, I just, I, I'm at that point too. Like, look, fighters like to see fighters fight. And I'm saying that he, he's, he's got some dog in him. He's he's okay with taking a shot. He showed it tonight. He took some shots yeah. tonight. He's taken some shots before in the past, you know, in some of his fights. He, can, he he's getting I'll, better at I'll, boxing. Look, I'll give him credit Absolutely. in a lot of areas. And one of the things I'll give Jake credit in, first off, he's got he does have heart. Because even tonight, after the second round, he was exhausted. Yeah. He threw so many shots and threw them as hard as he could that he just gassed himself. Mm -hmm. And going back to the corner, you can see him, the, the big, big breasts, you know, and he comes out and you can tell, but he's able to control himself, try to slow things down, use a different tactic. Instead of throwing real hard, he started using the jab. It worked for him. And he's a smart fighter. He, he's a smart boxer. He understands the sport. He understands what he needs to do at times. And he gets himself in a position to then go and throw the big shot that, possibly can put his opponent out and get rid of him he's he, i'm not saying people are gonna you know everyone's gonna like him or anything but he can box and i've said it for a long time the guy can box well he can box at the level he's boxing right now against opponents who can box at a lower level than him yeah and we saw tonight when somebody can take his best shot and keep, and still keep walking forward like that first knockdown that was more of an off balance no, clubbed like, you in the was, side of the head that was, you saw Mike Perry take and square off. He brings his right leg yeah. forward as he got hit. And you go, what are you doing? But yeah. he went Both down because went straight balance. He was fine. He just lost his yeah. balance. got clubbed. Yeah. He got hit, hit like a club. Just knocked yep. him over. He wasn't yep. hurt at all. Just kind of thudding and just hell, fell. No. The other knockdowns, there was some damage. Yep. Yeah, the other ones he shots. felt. Yes. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and verify those. <laughs> I mean, like, yo, they, yeah, they he, were real. He, he, they were real. He felt them. Yeah, exactly. So I just I we're at that stage now, John. Where but, go ahead. But I do I do want to say this about it. First off, I thought the UFC fights overall were, were pretty uh, entertaining, mm -hmm. really good. 
that fight was entertaining. Yeah. That fight, it was, Mike Perry made it entertaining. Jake Paul made it entertaining in the way he, he responded at times. You know, I didn't like the way Mike Perry was uh, fighting because I was thinking that's not smart. Yeah. But it was entertaining. No, I agree. John, uh, Amanda Serrano looked fantastic. Her oh, opponent yeah. looked uh, not even Horrible. like in the same realm. He was not in the same freaking. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. It wasn't a good. Um, Stevie Morgan did not belong in the same ring no. as Amanda. Nothing. They were on different levels. You know, but the one thing that I was going to say is I can't. I'm trying. Sorry, I'm trying to remember the names right now. I will tell you that the fight between uh, Lucas Body mm -hmm. against Ashton Silve. <sighs> My God, because body was wait, wait, getting you have just... to know, you got to preface it first. Go ahead. Text me. Tell me I what you text, text me. You. Tell me what text you text Tell I the world what you, you text me. I texted you in the, um, I want to say the fourth round. Yeah. I said, this will be over in two rounds. <laughs> right? That's exactly what I said. You said Sylvie was going to get him out of there. In I two did rounds. not say that. Oh, I will I'm pull read up you my text, text right, right now. now. I'm going to pull it up. Okay, I will George, pull it up. I you want you to screenshot that and sex and show it. I can read Hold it on. here. This kid Sylvester. Go is ahead, gonna read stop it. This guy within the next two. This rounds. This kid Sylvester is going to stop this guy in the next two rounds. <laughs> okay, okay and that, that's what I and I said. Well, I was right about the two rounds. I was wrong about the guy. <laughs> That was great. That was great. Dude, was he like... wanted, th it reminded me of when Kyoji Horiguchi fought Sergio Pettis. Yes. And Ky Kyoji won every second. And, yeah. and Sil was just, I mean, putting it on it him. Was... I'm like, man, this is, this is going to get worse and worse and worse. And all it took, the beautiful two-punch combination, man. And he yeah. landed both. And Sil was... Face down, ass up. That was a hell of a comeback. I was just laughing because you literally oh, just great. sent that text. <laughs> uh, dude, I put, I put, I put the bad mojo out there, and I said, I "What did I say?" Bad mojo out there. I said, "I said, I hope he stops him." And then boom, and then we just started laughing. I said, <laughs> "It was." I was just cracking up. That was funny though. Yeah. Good. I mean, it was a great combination. Just oh. right on the button, enemy, John. perfectly placed. Yeah, yeah. Perfectly just it, and he hit the straight right. I think it was straight right. Then he hit him with the uh, like the left upper, hook, yeah, put him away. Yeah, left oh, hook. Put him. He hit him with a two piece after that straight right. So I think yeah. it was a right uppercut. Well, he hit him with he hit him with a shot that you could see. Oh, that stung him. Oh yeah. And it was like Silva decided, okay, I'm going to come in tight, and then he got hit with that two piece. And he yeah. didn't even get the soda. Just a nasty, nasty. It was, nasty it was shot. just over. That yeah, that video has been playing all over Twitter since the fight happened. Oh, just insane, insane. But that's that's one of those ones you know we talk about all the time. You don't want to be that guy who's face down, ass up. No, nope. Sills gonna be watching that one for a while, going, man, I was winning every second of that fight. But you're in that knockout of the of the year kind of category now. Yeah, that's not a good place to be in no, the knockout of the year not category. If you're the, you're one the one that got that knocked, knocked out. out. But I mean, shit! It was it was definitely good. This guy Jake Paul calls out Mike Tyson, and Alex Bahia. Okay, it's all good. <laughs> he knows he can't fight Alex Bahia. It's just like, why not? You know, I would like to see. You know who I'd like to see him fight? Who? Sean Strickland. Yeah, that'd that's be a the fun fight. that that'd be a fun fight. I would. I'd love fight. to see that fight. I mean, get, I, I would give Sean, I, I would get, even, I'd be like, okay, look, if he beats Sean, Sean walks around probably about 205, somewhere in there, right? He's 185 pounder, yeah. probably walks around yeah. 200, two, I'd say 205. 210. Oh, ripped up to 210? Probably what he's out of shape, out of shape. You know, but if he's yeah. like just training on a daily, but not super hard, probably walking around about 202, 205, somewhere in there. Like, normally fighters are about 20 to 25 pounds heavier. See, but than again, why are you putting Sean Strickland in that position to box? That's all What's Sean one of the does. Things? What, no, what's one of the things that makes Sean very... Push kick. Uh, boom. Yeah, yeah, his push kick. But it's I Push mean, kick all the time. It's but a jab. It, Alex and him both, they spend so much time... Alex Bahia, they spend so much time boxing. Yes. You know, their main focus, it seems like, has been boxing. Alex has been working yeah. a lot more on his grappling and his wrestling, but... I mean, there's. I don't think. Obviously, we know that's never going to happen. Um, but that's that's definitely. Uh, See, something. to me, uh, that's an educated call out by Jake Paul. Yeah, because you got someone 
let's be honest you know i, I was filling out a thing for uh you know mma awards today and alex Pejas names there you know as one of the people possibly for fighter of the year and i'm like who else yeah i can't think of anyone else. who else four wins the guys you know multiple fucking divi- i mean who else yeah, he's on a different level. We're talking about him going up to heavyweight to try and capture the third title. Possibly. And the other yeah. thing, too, like you got Jake Crazy. Paul calling out Conor McGregor. Conor's walking around 185, like, to the gills. It is like the, the, you do. Bro, it, it's like, what are we doing? Like, you're fine. He was used to fight at 145. 145. And yeah. you're 230. Like, you, yeah. think about who you're calling stop. out. And stop. Yeah. Like, stop. Like, that's where, I'm, that's where I'm at. Like, go ahead. Chase the big names. I get it. But chase the big names that are in your area, in your weight class, in your area. You know, you know. Here, I'll throw out, I'll throw a little uh, a little tidbit out there. Not tidbit, but I'll throw a little uh, name out there. That you know what, Keto George, you might you might like this too. You know who I would like to see him fight Be above all of them, Logan Paul. Yeah, they have they've talked that that fight almost happened for this show. That was part of the thing when when Mike Tyson pulled out, they talked about it. See, my only concern is I wonder if they'd really pull punches or if they'd be if we just be like a glorified sparring match. No, I mean, Logan was there tonight, basically in his corner I, and all. Sorts I think of stuff. I think uh, I don't know. Yeah, and I, I'm not I'm not up on it enough, but I've watched enough things. Don't lie, I'm, you're I'm a fucking TikTok whore. <laughs> We know it. You're on there just fucking following the like, shit out of these like, guys. I can't even use it. People send me things for TikTok, and I don't have it. So it's like, open TikTok? No, don't have it. He has TikTok. Can't watch that. Keto George set it up you on your lying. phone for you. He knows. You, see, you're just a lying son of a bitch. Oh, but man. seriously, I think that they would actually fight, because I think Jake's got fucking issues with uh, Logan. And I think, you know, they'll, st- they'll, they'll still love each other, but, you know, sometimes you got to fight your brother. Sometimes you know you gotta you gotta slug it out. You know what brother brother fight almost happened was Ken and Frank. That fight was that's not, this that's close. Not, that, that's to get... not a brother brother. It's brother brother. No, it is not. It's not even close. Why not? Well, how the hell do you come up with that's a brother? They're Are brothers. they related? Have you lost your mind? John, they're brothers. You don't. You don't you... <laughs> they're adopted brothers. They're still brothers. They're ado- Yeah, they're adopted brothers by. Bob Shamrock, who adopted both of them when they were both adults at over 18. Okay. And then he did that for Frank so he could get the name Shamrock because Ken had a name already in Japan and Frank was going to go over there and, and fight so it would help him. But they didn't treat each other like brothers. They don't treat each other like brothers. They were never brothers. Yeah, they're brothers. <laughs> That's how most brother relationships go. Look at Jake Paul and Logan are talking is? about fighting. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah, that's how brother relationships yeah. go. You love each other, you hate each other, you know, beat each other up. I mean, I'm sure that they fought quite a bit in the house that they grew up in. Might as well get paid millions for it. I mean, oh, yeah. let's just do one that's for it. real. You that's know? It. And I'd love to, and that's one thing I'd love to see Jake Paul whoop Logan's ass. I'd love to see that happen. I mean, Jake's so when you, Jake's hold, I'm line. gonna sit there and go put you back on the spot now because you said that that fight was that close. Yep. Yeah. Tell me what happened. I don't know what happened. Ooh. I don't know what happened. Can you tell me what happened? Yeah, I know what happened. Well, then tell me what happened. You can't I bring it up. I, should, I don't know. Well, I was just asking if you knew. You know what? There's a question out there. Okay. That um. That I mean, I'm not sure if you know. I mean, you know, I mean, you were on Joe Rogan and talked about it. Let me see if you really know. Okay. I want to know. Cause I can tell when you're, you're, you're telling the truth. <laughs> John's always telling the truth, except for when he's lying with us. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> right, John? I always tell the truth. Even when I lie, even when I lie, there you go. Um, how did this, you said this on Joe and I know that uh bet us had reached out to me and go, Hey, can you have John give us a better explanation or give us, how did the name MMA come about? It's impossible to say because too many people take credit for it. Well, tell me your version, John. That's what I'm asking you. <laughs> tell me the version <laughs> of... Go ahead. I give credit, and it's not for him saying and coming up with the mixed martial arts, but I give credit to Jeff Blatnick for being the guy that pushed that forward 
and started using it continuously and making other people look at the sport and because at the time it was called NHB, no holds barred. Yeah. And so Jeff was the one we got together and I said, look, you got to start pushing, you know, cause it was, and it was all due to court cases and things like that. We've got to start. We can't have the, Oh, it's no holds barred. I said, that doesn't sound good. We got, it's mixed martial arts. And I got mixed martial arts from when I was first asked to do uh, the UFC as be a referee. I was working for the LAPD and you had to have a work permit to do another job, meaning that the department had to, uh, approve your work permit so i turned in a work permit filled it out turned it in and said you know you know referee for martial arts and I, it got kicked back to me and they said well what kind of martial arts and so i'm fucking like shit i can't say mixed martial arts mm. i can't say it's no holds barred mixed martial arts put it back in and i got approved mm. and i got i got to work the thing now is that the first time it was ever used i can't tell you that i don't yeah. know I know someone said there was, and, and this would have made it in front of mine, uh, there was uh, supposedly a LA Times writer who wrote a story about the first UFC, and which was November 12th of 1993, and I didn't turn in that work permit until, uh, I want to say February of 94. So supposedly he wrote a story that he said something about mixed martial arts mm. i don't know if it's true or not but i was told that by someone so got it i know john peretti is now saying that oh he was saying it years before and who the hell knows i i don't the guy who made it the vernacular that people started using it is absolutely jeff blatnick got it Got it, got it, got it. All right, there. Now, you guys love a little tidbit, a little story time with Big John McCarthy. Time. So, I want to throw that out there. But hey, uh, hope you guys enjoyed this show, man. And if you guys didn't check out our uh, our bets through BetUS, check it out. We got uh, a pay per view, I think, coming up this week, right? Mm. Yeah. This week? We just had Bilal Muhammad so on. If you guys missed that interview, it's down below in our in our uh, channel. Check it out. Bilal has some good things to say. Man, he's a he's a fun guy to be with, man. He's a great guy. I enjoy being around him. I enjoy talking with him. We've had him on now, I think, twice. He's just he's just a good dude, man. A good person. I'm looking forward to seeing him fight. I'm good yep. friends with Leon as well. Leon's a great guy as well. You know, yep. uh, I'm hoping that they have a great fight and the best man wins. That's how best it all comes goes. out. That's but uh, John, go ahead and hit our links down below for BetUS. Also, if you guys want to play some bets, they will give you a $2,000 bonus, up to $2,000 bonus, sorry, on your first three deposits. Normally, it's your first one deposit, but on your first three deposits, they will mat they will allow you to go up to 125% bonus on your first three deposits up to $2,000. Nice. So check that out. Also, we have Element link down below. Like I said, if you purchase through that link, Right now is a good time to stay salty, and they will send you free product with your purchases. Extra, con or extra. Con I keep saying content. Extra product, <laughs> extra product. Uh, with our link down below. Check that out, and hopefully, you guys enjoy this show. It was a fun night tonight. You know, fights. Like I said, the UFC card was a better card than I thought it would be because when I started watching those guys and going back through their old videos and their old fights, going, man, this fight and this fight could really match up well if they just go out there and fight the way that they've been fighting. And sure enough, man, we had some of those fights did. that really played out that way. So, John, my man, take it away. For everyone out there, thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoy the show. Keep yourself safe and be nice to someone tomorrow. Do something good. We will see you.